second part of the computer science O level syllabus. Now we're going to start with unit 1.12 hexadecimal. And this is the sixth lesson on hexadecimal system. Let's start with the learning outcome. In this lesson you're going to represent positive numbers in hexadecimal notation. Don't worry about the outcome for now. We're going to touch upon the recap and then explain you a bit more about hexadecimal system. So this is about the binary number system and the derivative number system. For instance, consider 011101. As you can see, we have a base 2 here, which means that it is represented using the binary number system, which is base 2. Therefore, the two numbers that are used combination of values are 0 and 1. Now, 178, you can see a base 10 here, therefore it is a denary decimal number system. We write it as base 10. Therefore, the different number values that we're going to use is 0 to 9. So these two number systems, we have already studied them. Now, let's move on to the hexadecimal number system. As you can see, the hexadecimal number system uses base 16. Therefore, all number will be represented as the base 16 and the power n. So we're going to use base 16 numbers. Therefore, we have 16 different combinations. A number is represented, a hexadecimal number is represented. It is written as bracket AF base 16. So you always need to check the base to know which number system we're using. Now, 16 different combination is used. For example, a DNR number 0 in hexadecimal is, is represented as 0. This will be from 0 to 9. These are represented using normal numbers. And as from 10, the DNR number 10, to map it to the hexadecimal, we use alphabet. So the combination of numbers is from 0 to 15. And from 0 to 9, these are represented as normal numbers. As from 10 to 15, these are represented as alphabets, as you can see, A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's see how you can convert a denary number to hexadecimal. So, let's say you got 168 base 10 which is denary or decimal, we need to convert it to base 16. As you see base 16, you'll need to do repeated division of 16 to get the remainder. So we start with 168 divided by 16. In this case, the closest number exactly divisible is 160. Therefore, the remainder will be 8. Now, 160, the closest number, when it is divided by 16, this will give us 10. We divide it by 16, again the remainder will be 10, when we are finally left with 0, we just stop. Now, you need to read the remainder from bottom to top. Okay, In this case, we start with uh, mapping the remainder to the hexadecimal table, as you can see now. And this is where you'll have your final answer. So the remainder 10, you just need to map it to the hexadecimal. For this, we get an A. And then the second remainder was 8. When you map 8 to the equivalent hexadecimal, you're going to get 8. So the final answer is A8, which is 168 as a denary number. To hexadecimal, it is A8. Okay, let's look at the second example now. Let's say 208 base 10 to base 16 hexadecimal. Again, we use repeated division to get remainder. So when 208 is divided by 16, the remainder will be 0. Because 208 is exactly divisible by 16, which gives us 13. In this case, when this is redivided by 16, it's going to give us a remainder of 13. We finally 
0. Now you can just map it to your table. So 13, this is mapped to D. And then 0, this is mapped to 0. Therefore, your final answer will be D, Z.